What's going on, world? It's your boy Gemini Brown here, back with another episode of Nalo Kicking Knowledge. Today, we'll be discussing the weekly forecast, looking at what the stars have in store. So, let's get into it. As you know, we're coming off of a wonderful new moon solar eclipse and the sign of cancer. And just to reiterate, that new moon was very significant for um, releasing toxic patterns within our own psyche, our own emotional nature, taking a look at our personal relationships right with family people we consider family those we have an emotional connection towards and seeing whether or not um they are benefiting us and uh need to be let go or you know how they can be adjusted going forward so it was really an end it was really a time of endings and new beginnings so i hope everyone you know um really locked in and set some real intentions tied up some um, loose ends with that and now we're here this week this is a funny funny week very funny week because um, the more you go in astrology you know the more you realize there's always something else to study and um, my my guy Pata Pata Ra uh, he uh just made a post about this in one of our Facebook groups. He said, you know, when people actually understand aspects or give aspects a chance, you know, the game of astrology changes so much more. And it's very true. So I'm saying all that to say this is that the the real, the, the highlighted thing the, this week are some aspects called interconjunctions or, uh, Queen Canuxes, whichever ones you want to call it. There are 150 degree aspects and I like to think of them as two energies that are not seen eye to eye at the moment. Okay, it's really hard to match them up. You know, and I have a couple of these shits in my chart and I'm just like, oh, and that's what it does. It causes frustration. It really does because you're like, how the hell do I get these energies to balance? So the energy we have a couple energies in uh, Queen Canucks this week. One being Mercury and and Pluto. Okay, Mercury is in the sign of um, uh, Leo, and it, next week it will be going retrograde. As I do this video today, it is it is exactly um, Queen Canucks Pluto. And this is interesting because what it is, is that it's highlighting the fact that there are people in our lives, romantic partners, co-workers, children, siblings, you know, that we have a very hard time communicating with. There are things that we want to say to them, but the communication is always seems to be off. And at this time, that, that relationship or that understanding is being highlighted. And it can, what can happen for a lot of us is that we're being going to be put in a position where we need that person to hear us. There needs to, there's a conversation that needs to be had. It could be we need them to hear us or they need us. If you are the person that's being needed and you're watching this damn video, and because like I said, the way these interconjunctions work is it's like an intuitive thing. You're like, okay, this is not like what reading between the lines, basically. You know what I'm saying? So you will know if someone is trying to tell you something, but they don't have the words to do so. So like I said, you're watching this video, be that person who steps up to the plate and really, you know, uh, opens the lines of communication. Because with it being Pluto, right, Mercury and Pluto, these are deep conversations. These are transformative 
conversations. This could be in your own personal relationship. You know, just to give an example, some you may really need to tell your partner like, yo, <laughs> I want to see other people. You know, this isn't working for me anymore. You're being a little too clingy. You know, you're you, all a lot of stuff. I don't like how you spaz out at me. These are conversations that need to be had. And, you know, it's all types of situations. So that's something to uh, keep an eye out on. But my suggestion is since Mercury is creative energy, right? Uh, Mercury and Leo is creative energy. If, it, if, if you can't say it directly to the person or you don't know how to, figure out, you know, if you are musically inclined, if you are artistically inclined, create, create, give yourself that perspective, you know what I'm saying, to see what's going on from uh, another view, a more creative view, and that can empower you, give you confidence, you know, to do that, but it's good, it's, it's, like I said, the Mercury is going to go retrograde, so ultimately, whatever is going to occur, these, these themes are going to continue to uh, play out, the Mercury is going to go forward, and then it's going to go back, all right, uh, you know, Mars is still in retrograde, and week by week, I've just been watching it. I've just been watching the energy intensify, and people's anger start, is starting to show. You know, just little, just little things on a day-to-day -day basis that I see, from work to, you know, being on the street, watching others interact. That anger is starting to, you know, uh, uh, boil over. But remember, the wisdom for this Mars retrograde is to honor the anger, but do it constructively. All right. Um, find some type of way to channel that energy right into something else. Let it empower you. Empowerment. Big, 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 big theme here. OK, going forward. Now, Venus is also in the sign of Virgo. It's a very funny transit. Oh my God! For anybody who's been watching my uh, follows my my Instagram, I made a couple uh, videos on there about this, just meditating on this position. So traditionally, Venus is um, uh, debilitated in Virgo, meaning that this expression does not function at its best. This is not the prettiest version of Venus by far, and. Rather than tell you, I just encourage you to go sit and think like, hmm, why is Venus debilitated in Virgo? You know, what What about Virgo and Venus that, you know, isn't really working well together? But nonetheless, I believe you can make any position, you know, uh, work to the, its best for you. You, there's always good in every position. But, um... What I've just been noticing, man, <laughs> so, you know, Virgo's about being critical, Venus is love, relationships, I, I'm just seeing so many picky people out there, and they're nothing wrong with being picky, but a lot of people are showing why they are unhappy in love. And they are unhappy in love because their expectations of others are fucking through the roof. And my whole thing that I've been saying is rather than taking this time and using this energy to criticize others, what are you doing to improve yourself? Okay? This energy, I know, because I've been meditating, it's literally letting it be known like, yo, there are people you there are people out there stuck in low vibrational relationships because of certain ideologies and perceptions that they have and i that just reminded me i have to talk about uh mercury squaring jupiter right because of certain perceptions that they have okay so and perceptions that they have and habits that they have the law of attraction is a funny thing man Funny, funny thing. You can have the ability to attract. There's an ideal partner out there for everybody, but you gotta do the work and able to find them. They're not gonna come into your lap. They're not. And when you get them, you better be ready for them. 
you can say you smoke cigarettes, right? And you know within yourself, like, damn, I need to stop doing this shit. Okay, this isn't good. I don't like this about myself. What's going to occur is there's a partner out there who, one, not going to respect that shit. So you have two options, for, and this is just how some people's energy works. You can, the universe will allow you to overcome that problem on your own, right? So you're able to attract this partner who wouldn't look at you because, you know, who wouldn't even consider you because you have this habit. Or two, they're going to send you a partner who's going to criticize the shit out of you for that habit, forcing you and letting you know you need to. And here's what I think, which would I, what would I rather have? But the higher wisdom here is that you can't hold others to a certain standard if you're not embodying it yourself. You can't want, you know, um, a hands-on person if you're not a hands-on person. You think about this wisdom. It is a major flaw in how humans are interacting with each other. And a lot of you people I'm observing displaying this behavior of quote-unquote spiritual. So think about it, right? If I want a man to do manly things, that means I need to be willing to do womanly things. Okay? One hand washes the other. So, Mars, Ver uh, Venus, interconjunct. There is, you know, frustration in relationships. There, the percent, then Mercury and Jupiter in square, okay? Um, it's, it's, it's widening, but that's also adding to the, the, uh, our perceptions not being on point. There, I guarantee you, there's been people, shit, I've experienced this, but I, you know, I'm just sticking to my guns because you know what you like and you know what you don't. You, you get what I'm saying? There will be, for some of you, there will be people who will approach you, right? Flirting with you, whatever, and you're not giving them a chance. Don't get me wrong. You know what you like, but like I said, you can't not give them a chance because of something they're not embodying that you yourself are not embodying. Okay? So, that's just a little bit how this energy is playing out. I see a lot of misconnections, and I see a lot of people who need to humble themselves in order to better uh, receive what they want. It's a tricky game out here, this spirituality, but ultimately, um, it really allows you uh, to learn. These type of moments allows you to learn about yourself and uh, it really allows you to humble yourself. And that's what we need to do. Humble ourselves before Leo season. Okay? So, this is my interpretation of this week's energy. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you need to read it, holla at me. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, feel free to do so. Until next time, peace.